Today I'm working on a voiceover recording that I'm processing independently with two different plugin chains. One is from Isotope and the other is from Waves. We are going to compare them and see what the difference is. Today I'm recording on my SM7B microphone. That is a dynamic mic and it requires a uh, mic lifter or a... Uh, a mic booster, they call them. And I'm using the Dynamite by SE Electronics. We're going into my X73i Vintech Audio preamp. And uh, there's a, just a touch of EQ, a little bit of low and high end uh, EQ on the voice. And the value here is I want you to hear different microphones with different setups uh, processed. So you have an idea of what different types of microphones sound like going into high end and low end preamps and things like that. And we'll do the same for the submission I've got. We have um, a guy by the name of Felix Bormann. He's a voiceover artist out of Germany and he is using a TLM 102 microphone. He's going into an Antelope Zen Go audio interface and he uses Adobe Audition. And he has a do-it-yourself booth, a vocal booth that he has put together himself. He says it's about three feet wide. Uh, it is about uh, just under six feet in length, and it's just over six feet high. All corners have bass traps. The ceiling and walls have acoustic panels uh, everywhere, and they're three inches thick, uh, which is good because the um, the thicker the panel, if it's uh, made of like rock wool, uh, the thicker it is, the better it's going to be at absorbing lower frequencies. Thicker panels, even lower frequencies that it's able to absorb. Thin panels do a good job at absorbing the high frequencies, but that's when you still are left with that low frequency resonance that can happen in your room. Uh, he is narrating audiobooks. He says his master files don't have the clarity and he wants uh, to uh, just up his game a little bit and um, reduce the boxy sound while not completely removing the depth. I love it when um, uh, you give me instructions and directions. So that helps me uh, in the first version that I send you hit your target. Because, you know, my goal when I process audio is to make you happy. I want you to love your voice sound and I want it to inspire you uh, when you're recording. He is, uh, he's got a PC and here's what I want to do in this particular voiceover. I thought it would be cool to try two different and I actually uh, sent him both of these versions, one that he asked for and an alternate version that he can compare to using two different types of plugins. So I've used a series of plugins from Isotope and then I also processed his voice separately in an, an, another uh, file that I gave him using the Pro-Q3 EQ and and the Shep's Omnichannel multi-processing plugin by Waves. So let's take a listen to both of those uh, processing presets on his voice. And these are both custom tuned to his microphone in that little vocal booth and his voice. And uh, we'll see what kind of sound we're able to get. And, I, you know, I don't want to say, here's what I think. I don't think one is better or worse than the other. I think they're different because th these are tools and it's more about the know-how. And if you can uh, adjust and get a pleasing sound with one EQ, you could probably do it with other EQs. Yes, they've got more features. Some plugins have different features and just sound different, but I think you can get a good sound. And both of these, uh, or all three of these companies, Isotope, uh, FabFilter for sure, and Waves, I mean, they're all heavyweights in the plugin world. So let's see and let's listen to what I've come up with. All right, first we will listen to the raw file. So you can see here on the left, I've got uh, my VU meter and we'll check to make sure we've got a good input level going into the plugins. The first five plugins are from Isotope and uh, that's the first uh, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, that's the first chain that I put together. And then the Pro-Q3 and uh, in the studio rack, I've got the Sheps Omni channel. That's the second one we'll listen to on the same exact clip uh, at the same volume and everything. First, uh, let's listen to the raw audio file from Felix. Dennoch musterte Robin die Frau, die durchaus ihre Reize hatte. Ihr langer, schwarzer Mantel verdeckte zwar das Wichtigste, Doch konnte er sich durchaus vorstellen. The first thing I noticed is he's, we've got a good recording level. And let's see if I adjust it a little bit. Yeah, I raised it up about 4 dB. So um, uh, 
it was a little on the low side. And when you send me a file, I'll, I'll write you back and say, hey, generally speaking, your recording level could go up or down a little bit, but most of the time it's in the right place. And I, uh, I will adjust for it on my end for the example. But So I had to boost it up about 4 dB. It's better to be on the low side than the high side um, with your recording level because you just don't want to go, you don't want to peak uh, over the negative 6 if you can help it. First impression is the high frequencies are being absorbed really well, but I definitely hear a boxy low sound and it's just the dimensions. It's the height, width, and length of the room that you're recording in because those low frequencies are probably passing right through his three inch thick uh, sound treatment. They're still bouncing on the wall. They're bouncing back into the microphone and also, um, it's at a slight, slight delay, and it's being picked up again. So his pure voice and then the bounce at a slight delay, and that causes a phase cancellation. You don't have to worry about what that means. It doesn't matter if you don't understand the physics. Just know you got to add room treatment if you've got a boxy sound, and that's what's going to help and make it sound good. I like the uh, TLM-102. is a great mic. Um, first, we'll look at what I've done with uh, Ozone's uh, Pro Equalizer. And wow, look at all that low energy that I had to scoop out with the initial um, EQ to try to balance his voice. Some of them went as low as about 10 dB in, uh, in the f number four, in the uh, 404 hertz range. So that's just, that's where that box in this is. And so by scooping all of this out, you know, and, and manipulating the EQ and finding the, the frequencies, uh, that's what the shape looks like. I've had to attenuate the frequencies with this shape to get to my ear a balanced sound. Then we've added the Ozone Pro Dynamics. We have a 2.5 to 1 ratio, pretty quick attack and a medium type release, and it's based on the uh, the peak detector of the circuit here. So, and I've also split the compressor, so it's only working on information from 267 hertz on up. So it's compressing the upper frequencies, and the lower, low mid and low frequencies are not being compressed after that EQ. Next, I added Ozone's pro vintage eq to sweeten things up a little bit and you can see i boosted uh um, with some wide cues some some broad strokes i've boosted the really low stuff we've still scooped out where that boxiness is and then we've uh, added a little bit of clarity and you know this is uh sweetening eq so uh, it's going to be used in a more gentle way broader strokes uh, and it's it's more to color and to finish the tone and presentation of the frequencies in the voice. Then I used the Neutron 4 gate uh, from uh, Isotope. And I love this gate. It's great because you can gate specific uh, frequency bands differently, which is wonderful. So there's a gate on just the uh, 246 hertz and below so i'm getting that separately and that's working independently from a gate that's 246 up to 4.1 kilohertz uh, that is being gated separately and you can set different ratios and it, it all adds up to just give you a better control of the noise coming from uh the voice and this one is um 4.1 kilohertz on up to as high as it can go which is probably around 20 kilohertz and then at the very end, I've used the RX Pro Deesser, and uh, that just takes off some of that uh, high sibilance that I uh, found in his voice. So, all right, I'm going to play for you the unprocessed audio, and then we're going to engage all the isotope of five plugins that I've used, and we'll listen to uh, what that sounds like. Dennoch musterte Robin die Frau, die durchaus ihre Reize hatte. Ihr langer, schwarzer Mantel verdeckte zwar das Wichtigste, doch konnte er sich durchaus vorstellen, welche Rundungen auf ihn gewartet hätten. Kein Interesse, lehnte er ab und widmete sich wieder seinem Glas zu. In einem Zug leerte Robin das Bier und erhielt unaufgefordert ein neues. Wollt ihr nicht wissen, was ich euch bieten kann? fragte die Unbekannte. In this processing chain, I'm hearing a more powerful sound. I definitely hear uh, the removing of that boxiness and some more bass is added. And also uh, the sibilance and that high kind of harsh sound is definitely pressed down and it's not as apparent in the voiceover processed with the isotope. Let me show you under the hood of the uh, fab filter and the wave plugins and you can see what I've done uh, to get the sound. Uh, first, we'll start off with the fab filter Pro Q3. Let's make that 
bigger. It looks like it's in a different space here, but that's only because uh, that the graph is different. Uh, it's just does this one goes much lower, uh, but it's the same general area that I'm uh, attenuating those frequencies to get rid of that boxy sound in his voice. A couple things to notice here. There is one dynamic band I switched the dynamics on for. Um, so this upper mid-range type of tone in his voice, I'm only attenuating when it passes a threshold. So I've made this a compressor in this specific frequency space and the other thing i've done here which i really like um that i'm starting to use more and more is the slope of some of the uh, uh the q uh, you could kind of make them a little rectangular which i really like and i've been using that more and more it's just another way of helping you get to the space that you want to faster and i i like that i'm noticing that I'm using that more and more. And then after the FabFilter Pro-Q3, I've added one of the um, plugins that I use a lot because I really like the way that it sounds. I'm comfortable using it and it's, uh, it's very affordable too. And that's the Waves Sheps Omni Channel. And I really like this because uh, it has everything you need to get a really nice sound post parametric EQ. Uh, it's got a a preamp, so you can add some saturation, a gate, de uh, an EQ. It actually has two de EQ and a compressor. And then it gives you the option to add another one, any any uh, additional Waves plugin that you may have in your library, or another one of these uh, five um, processors that it has. So here is how I use the Sheps Omni channel in the configuration for Felix's uh, submission. We added a little bit of saturation in the even harmonics. I've got an expander type of gate, which is a little bit more on the gentle side, and we're probably taking about 6 to 12 dB of reduction. I'm uh, using a de in the really high frequency. There was that kind of harshness that he had in his, in his voice, in his room, and I uh, was able to kind of press that down a little bit. And we're using the sweetening here of the EQ. Once you understand how an EQ works, um, you know, most of them are controlled and manipulated the same. You know, once you get a, a good understanding of EQ and uh, the cues and what specific frequencies do to a voice recording, uh, you're able to use the tools. So, you know, once you get a good understanding of, of all of these processors, then the world of plugins kind of opens up and you can start picking and choosing and shopping uh, all different types of plugins. Ooh, I like this EQ a little bit better because it has this type of a sound. And, the, and all the curves are different and the way that they work is different. But then we're going into a compressor. I use a VCA compressor purposely because a VCA type compressor, uh, it's called a, like a bus compressor and it's very transparent. I use it very lightly. We're using a uh, um, four to one ratio and a pretty quick release and attack time. On the, it's on the faster side. And what a compressor does when it's set like that uh, with a VCA compressor is it quickly uh, adjusts for the loud volumes and then brings it right back pretty quick. So uh, an attack and release time will, uh, if, if audio comes through the compressor that's very loud, it lowers it and then brings it right back to where it was. And I'm doing that for just the loudest parts. And then on my second compressor, I am using uh, an opto compressor, which uh, is more of a smooth kind of silky type of a sound that just gives it some of that power. I think a lot of uh, um, the power in his voice and in a recording comes from an opto compressor used very lightly. You'll see I'm using the even lower ratio, two to five uh, to one, and a slower attack and a very a slow release time as well. So it's it's working kind of um, it's working very in a very liquid type of way naturally. So when a phrase gets louder, it slowly attenuates a little bit, and then when its its phrasing is back to normal volume, it raises it back up to where it was before. So it just works in a slower, sultry kind of way. I don't know if that's a good uh, explanation or or adjective, but uh, it's just a nice kind of a smooth vibe that you get from an opto compressor. All right, here's what we're gonna do. Let's take a listen to the before and after. Um, we'll listen to the raw file again and then we're going to listen to the uh, FabFilter Pro-Q3 and the Sheps Omnichannel engaged. First, unprocessed. Dennoch musterte Robin die Frau, die durchaus ihre Reize hatte. Ihr langer, schwarzer Mantel verdeckte zwar das Wichtigste, doch konnte er sich durchaus vorstellen, welche Rundungen auf ihn gewartet hätten. Kein Interesse, lehnte er ab und widmete sich wieder seinem Glas zu. In einem Zug leerte Robin das Bier und erhielt unaufgefordert ein neues. »Wollt ihr nicht wissen, was ich euch bieten kann?« fragte die Unbekannte. 
Kein Interesse, schrie Robin unvermittelt und sprang von seinem Stuhl auf. What's great about this um, recording is it is very, very dynamic because you could, even though it's in German and I don't speak German at all, and I hope he's not saying things that are inappropriate, <laughs> inappropriate because I, I don't know what he's saying, uh, but I can tell it's, a, it's an audio book. I could tell that he is reading dialogue, I think, I believe, and maybe uh, reading quotes and he's changing his voice and then he gets really loud at certain parts. It's, it's great um, because it's challenging when you're putting together a processing chain because you got to think about the dynamics. You know, if you use compression too hard, on the, on the loud stuff to, to correct it, then you're kind of backing yourself into a corner for the lower stuff. So you really have to think about how um, to approach it differently when it's a very dynamic presentation. So let's do this. I want to play the two uh, processed versions back to back. First the isotope and then the waves and back and forth so you can hear the difference. If you want to send me your voice, you need to go to my website. I am asking you to send me your voice. If you've been on the fence about doing it, let's let's make your voice sound better. Send me your voiceover file and I will uh, send back to you an example of what it sounds like professionally processed with a custom preset like I'm doing here for Felix. LennyB.com is the website. It'll bring you to this page here and you look for that red button at the top right you click on that button right there and then uh, you'll come to the page where it gives you just the instructions i try to make it as simple as possible it's best to prepare your audio first and uh you know there's some specifics that i need i'm looking for 30 seconds or anywhere between 30 seconds and two minutes and uh, a, a wave file and i tell you a little bit about um the uh, recording level that I'm, I'm looking to get because I want to I want to optimize the file as best as possible so I can give you a great sound and then you'll come to a form you fill that out give me a little information about you and the and the equipment that you're working with and then you'll receive an email where you can drop the file and it comes right to me you could think about it this way um, you've got nothing to lose what's the worst that can happen I'm going to in the worst case scenario I'll write back and say your room is too noisy or your equipment is just not at that uh, uh, at the space where I am able to make a difference producing or uh, processing it. But that'll answer a question for you. And I'll also, I'm not going to say, ah, no, your equipment sucks. I won't say that. What I'm going to say is, uh, the this is good, but you may need to upgrade this to reach the level. I'm going to teach you. I'm going to show you what you're going to need to do to get to the better quality recording. And that's what I want to do. I'm not going to criticize. I'll make suggestions and I'll sh steer you in the, in the right direction to raise your game. That's what I do. Uh, and that's what I want to do for you. So if you've been thinking about submitting your voice and, uh, and getting some questions answered and raising the quality of your audio, please do so. Okay. We're going to start by listening to Felix's audio. First, we'll listen to the isotope version and then we'll toggle back and forth between that and the uh, fab filter and waves iteration of the processing, custom processing. Dennoch musterte Robin die Frau, die durchaus ihre Reize hatte. Ihr langer, schwarzer Mantel verdeckte zwar das Wichtigste, doch konnte er sich durchaus vorstellen, welche Rundungen auf ihn gewartet hätten. Kein Interesse, lehnte er ab und widmete sich wieder seinem Glas zu. In einem Zug leerte Robin das Bier und erhielt unaufgefordert ein neues. Wollt ihr nicht wissen, was ich euch bieten kann? fragte die Unbekannte. Kein Interesse, schrie Robin unvermittelt und sprang von seinem Stuhl auf. I like the fact that I have no idea what he's saying because I'm focusing totally on uh, the audio and the quality and the dynamics and the processing. So, I mean, in my uh, estimation, I would say that one is not better than the other. It's just different. I mean, and I've said this before, it's art. I mean, if I make a painting that has these colors and then I, with these brushes, I use these tools and then I make a painting that has these colors, different colors, and I use these different tools, they're going to look different. They're going to fall on the viewer's eyes differently and give different impressions. But is one better than the other? I mean, I, some people can answer that question uh, and some people can't. I, I don't know. I think they both sound good. They're both an improvement. And it's uh, this is not a shootout. I use a lot of plugins and I know how to use a lot of plugins and I want to show you how to use a lot of plugins and raise the game. So it'll be interesting to see what uh, uh, comments are uh, in the video and uh, I'm happy to answer any questions, but uh, it was fun to do um, processing on using different tools for the same voiceover and which one did he decide on? It doesn't matter. <laughs> That's messed up. <laughs> 
Thank you so much for watching. Uh, real quick, before I close this out, this video, free courses are up on my website as well. Uh, EQ Techniques, Basics, and we've got a voiceover frequency guide. It's LennyB.com. That's where you find all the information about those free courses. I've got paid courses and uh, info about the custom processing service. So I'll leave you with this. Does it matter the plugins that you use? Maybe. Uh, do you like the plugins that you have? Are they great tools for you to make a presentation? Um, is some presentations going to sound better to some people than others? Yes. Uh, are you going to like what you've put together more on this uh, version than that version? Yes, because it's art. And that's just the fact. And it's all creative and it's all going to be different every time you do it. If I process this audio tomorrow, It'll sound different. I I can't, uh, you know, because I follow the ear and, and I can't recreate something. I suppose I could look at the numbers and do it. But if I did it without comparing the work I did before, it would be completely different. So I guess that's a good point and a good concept to understand. Learn how to use your ear. Learn to follow your gut and what sounds good to you. And, and just keep going. And uh, I appreciate you watching. 